Hey everyone, this is Sal from Geek.com and I'm here with the Toshiba R600 Ultra Portable Notebook. Uh, if you follow high-end Ultra Portables and you've probably heard of this and its predecessor, the R500, which uh, made quite a splash at the time because it was the thinnest ever and might still be the thinnest ever 12.1 inch Ultra Portable Notebook with an optical drive. Uh, that's right, this 2.4 pound, or some people say 2.2 pounds, uh, Ultra Portable has an optical drive. It's, uh, I think it's like 7 millimeters thick. We'll zoom in right there and pan across. It's, uh, it's crazy thin, but uh, I've been using the notebook a lot lately and I just want to do a quick video look at it. Uh, like I said, 12.1 inches and uh, starts at 19, sorry, 20.99 and uh, I'll just, uh, I'm gonna boot it up and we'll just talk as it boots. It starts at 20.99 uh, running a 1.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo SU9400 processor, that's a 1.4 gigahertz processor, ultra low voltage. Uh, then it runs uh, three gigabytes of RAM. Uh, okay, sorry. Intel, uh, GMA, 4500, MHD, integrated graphics, 3 gigabytes RAM, uh, yeah, and the uh, base level model runs a 160 gigabyte hard drive. This model is actually $29.99, so three grand, and that's because we're running a 128 gigabyte SSD, and, uh, oh yeah, and all the models run a, uh, a DVD burner, so it's, it's not a Blu-ray. Not that we would expect to see that on something like this. And the uh, notebook is about 0.77 or 0.78 inches thick. So uh, it's really, there's nothing to it. And to pack a uh, full computer in, you know, 2.2 pounds and uh, about, you know, 0.77 inches is, is really impressive. Uh, yeah, so boot it up really quickly. That is uh, thanks to the SSD in there. That makes a big difference, but it does increase the price about $900, which is uh, really serious. So uh, let's just take a uh, close look at the system when we have it uh, have it in front of us. As you can see on the inside, uh, you know, it's nice, it's plain. They uh, not a whole lot of buttons up here. There's power and uh, shortcut buttons. This shortcut button here is actually really cool. We'll look at it, and I just shut the backlighting off. So the display is still working. I'm not sure if we could, you might be able to see it very slightly. Yeah, you can. But uh, you could shut the backlighting off and uh, you can imagine, even though it has LED backlighting, uh, you can get a, uh, a lot of battery life extension out of that. So uh, yeah, it has that full keyboard, which is one of the advantages of using a 12.1 inch display as opposed to you know 10 or 11 inch, which uh, you're seeing on uh, not only netbooks, right, but uh, high-end ultra portables, you know, like Sony's TT. And then uh, looking at the parts. Oh, first of all, look at the look at this panel. There's nothing to it. It's a, it's really impressive LED backlit. So there's a, they don't have to have any depth there. And then uh, scrolling through, we have a VGA, and let's get really close to that. That's in an eSATA and USB combo port, which is super cool to see on ultra portable. Although uh, you know, not everyone's gonna have use for it. But uh, it is still USB, so you have you know have that. Then we have another USB uh, mic headphone, and then a uh, hardware volume adjustment. So if you're looking for volume in uh, your F keys double mapped, you need to go to the side. And there's uh, nothing on the front. Then we have uh, SDHC, the optical drive, and uh, work on this angle. Sorry. Then we have a wireless on/off switch, and below that we have Express Card. Then we have USB Ethernet. Uh, oh yeah, and then there's a Kensington lock port built into the hinge. So it's a little bit of a drop hinge there. Here's the battery. It's up top. Uh, port replicator. And then there's uh, nothing on the bottom except for easy access to your uh, wireless and your memories in there. There's uh, no good way to get at the hard drive, which is stored here. Otherwise, I take out the SSD and we could uh, play around with it and see what models in there. But... Uh, you have to take a, the whole chassis apart to do that, which uh, looks like there's about 10 or 15 screws. It's going to take a long time. But uh, the battery's in there. If I were to take the battery out, 
which I won't with the computer is uh, is sleeping. Well, we would see that there's no mobile broadband card under there. So uh, this great executive notebook doesn't have integrated mobile broadband. Instead, if you get the base model, you could upgrade your wireless to uh, uh, it's the Intel. I want to call it the 5400, the Wi-Fi Link 5400. It could be the 5500. I don't know it offhand, but uh, which has WiMAX option, which is uh, not exactly what people that want mobile broadband are going to be looking for. But you do have the USB option and then the Express card. If that if that's interesting, but yeah, the uh, notebook is a lot of fun to use. It's uh, I really like the keyboard and the uh, the cursor is passable. You know, they improved the buttons a lot. The buttons on the original R five hundred, and I had tested a prototype model for that, were uh, were not great. They fixed it with the production models, but they definitely got it dialed in with the R six hundred. Then there is a uh, fingerprint reader. And a uh, nice layout, controls where it should be, the leads where it should be. I love that you can shut the backlighting off. So as usage, usage goes, it's a really nice system. Then, uh, I mean, and the weight is just incredible. You just throw this thing in your bag and uh, you don't even know it's there, which is something really special. Uh, yeah, as for battery life, uh, they, uh, it's a bit tougher to judge. Uh, Toshiba says to expect something like seven hours and 53 minutes, which I think they really overshot. Uh, I'm still testing this, and in the article I'll have better numbers, but you can expect you know more like four or five hours, something like that. Right now I only have uh, it says 59 minutes left on 27 percent, so uh, you could do the math and extrapolate from there. But uh, the one thing I like to point out now that we're on video is that. The system is like so light, and uh, while I don't think well, it's definitely not rugged, but a lot of people tore apart the R500 for not being sturdy enough, and uh, it, it was there's a lot of flex. And while there is still flex, uh, I don't you know it hasn't broken. So I think they built some flex into it. They know it's there. This is a nice magnesium body and stuff like that. But uh, there's definitely a difference between it flexing and it breaking. Maybe eventually you'll have problems, but I haven't had any problems in the, uh, in the time I've spent with the uh, R600, you know, a couple, maybe a year and a half ago, and now the R, I mean, sorry, the R500, about a year and a half ago, and now the R600, which I've been kicking around for a couple weeks. Uh, but you can see the flex. Uh, we'll zoom in, and yeah, there's like, it flexes a lot, but this isn't going to have any effect on the panel. They know it's there. Uh, the... Some of the flexes that are more annoying is if you look over here, there's some flex, and then we'll close it. And of course, on the LCD lid, it's hard to see. And on the bottom, when you pick it up, you could just, you could feel it go in a little bit, which is like, it's, it's sort of disappointing, and you're not going to see it on your ThinkPad X200, or your ThinkPad X301, or your, uh, you know, HP EliteBook book uh, 2530 p but this is like 2.2 or 2.4 pounds. So it's coming in considerably lighter than them. So uh, you got to make some trade-offs. Anyway, yeah, the Toshiba Portage R600. It's a really impressive, super light, super thin, ultra portable that uh, has enough power to get the job done. But it is not the elite 12-inch ultra portable that exec you know it's for executives it's not for hardcore road warriors who are going to want that 2530p or that x301 it's uh, definitely a cool gadget and uh, if you just love thin light notebooks and you want an optical drive i mean it's incredible they could put an op optical drive in this right but if uh, if that's what you're looking for it's a it's a nice enough machine but for what it is i think it's a bit overpriced and it wouldn't be my pick even though i love playing with it i love carrying it to the coffee shop uh, yeah, so this is Sal Congeloso from geek.com. Thanks for watching and check back on the site for the uh, full article.